Let's say you're a data scientist and you've been asked to classify iris flowers based on their measurements. You've written some code in a collab notebook that solves the problem. However, what you really want is to build an interactive tool so people can classify iris flowers themselves. With Anvil, we can create our web app entirely in Python, no need to wrestle HTML, CSS, JavaScript or web hosting. For this tutorial, you need to know the basics of Python and have an understanding of how to use Google Collab Notebooks. Our app will be created in five steps. First, we'll create our app's user interface, then we'll write client-side Python code to dictate our user interface's behavior. Next, we will connect our app to our notebook and write a function to predict the iris species. In step four, we will deploy our app in just two clicks and choose a URL. Finally, we will host our model online with Anvil. The first thing we need is a user interface for our app. Let's start by logging into Anvil and creating a new blank app. We can rename the app to Iris Classifier by clicking on the app name at the top of the Anvil editor. To classify the species of an Iris flower, we need to collect several measurements. So let's design the user interface for collecting that data. We construct the UI by dragging and dropping components from the toolbox. Let's start by dropping a card into our form. This will be a neat container for the other components. Next, we will set up the label and text box components so that users can input the sepal length of the flower they want to classify. Select the label we just added and in the properties panel on the right, change the text to sepal length. Change the role to input prompt and in the text section, align the text to the right. Then select the text box we just added and change the name of the component to sepal underscore length. Let's style the text box by changing the placeholder text to centimeters and changing the text alignment to center. Lastly for our text box, let's change its type to number. This means the text box will only allow numbers to be entered. Repeat this process adding labels and text boxes for the other parameters we need. Sepal width, petal length and petal width. This will capture all the information we need to classify each iris flower. Next, let's add a button to run the classifier. Drag a button component from the toolbox to the bottom of our card and in the properties panel change its name to categorize underscore button and its text to categorize. Clicking this button will trigger a Python function that sends the iris measurements to our collab notebook. We'll create that function in step two. To finish our user interface, let's add a label where we'll display our results. Put it below the button, rename it to species underscore label, untick the visible tick box, center the text and change its role to headline. Later, we'll create a function that makes the label visible and change its text to the classification returned from our Google Collab notebook. Let's move on to step two and write some client-side Python to make the button do something when it's clicked. Select the button in the designer and in the properties panel on the right, scroll down to the bottom. Click the chevron next to the click event box. This will open the code view and create a function for us. From now on, every time the button is clicked by the user, this categorize button click function will be called. We want the categorize button click function to call the predict iris function in our Google Collab notebook. We'll create the predict iris function in our notebook in step three. We'll use anvil.server.call and pass the predict iris function name as the first argument. We also want to pass it the measurements the user has entered into our web app. The predict iris function will have four arguments, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. We'll get each one from the text property of the text boxes we added earlier. Finally, if an iris category is returned, we want to change the species label to be visible and set its property to the category. With our UI built, let's connect our notebook and create the predict iris function. To connect our web app to our notebook, we'll use the uplink. The uplink makes it easy to connect our web app to Python code anywhere on the web. Select the plus icon from the sidebar menu and add the uplink. Then select enable server uplink. This will give us an uplink key we can use in our Google Collab notebook to connect to this app. Take a copy of this key, we'll be using it soon. Now let's install the uplink in our Collab environment and connect our script using the key we just created. For simplicity, I've created a notebook that handles the iris classification for us. You can get your own copy of this notebook by following the link in the description. In the example notebook, I've written code that builds and trains a very simple classification model using scikit-learn's built-in iris dataset and the k nearest neighbors algorithm. How this works is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but Towards Data Science has a useful article that I've linked in the description if you're looking for more information. With our notebook open, let's add pip install anvil uplink to the top cell. This will install the anvil uplink in our notebook's environment. Now we can import the anvil.server.module and call the anvil.server.connect function, passing it the uplink key we copied earlier. That's it. When we run our cell, it will connect to our web app. 
Finally, let's define the predict iris function that will be called when the categorize button is clicked. We need to add the anvil.server.callable decorator to the function so it's available to call from our app. Inside the function, we'll use knn.predict to get the iris flowers classification and we'll return the iris species name from the iris data we loaded earlier. Finally, at the end of our notebook, we will call the wait forever function. This keeps our notebook running for longer so our app can call functions. Run the notebook, you should see output like this confirming the connection has been established. Now we have our app and script connected, all we have to do is publish our app for other people to use. Click the publish button at the top right of the editor and then select publish this app and use the public URL provided or enter your own. That's it, our model is now deployed online for anyone to use. Our app has one final problem, collab notebooks shut down after a certain amount of time. This means our model won't be available 24-7 and our app will stop working. There are two ways of solving this. Firstly, we can host the model on our own computer and connect our app to the model using the Amble uplink. There's a full tutorial linked in the description which shows you how to do this for free. The second solution is to deploy our model online with Anvil. This is the simplest way to deploy both our app and our model. Hosting the model online requires a paid account. Let me quickly show you how this works. We'll start by going back into our Collab Notebook. In the cell that builds and trains the Iris classification model, we'll import the joblib library and the files module from Google Collab. Next, we'll use joblib.dump to create an object representing our model. We'll name our object knn.skmodel. Then we can download the object as a file using files.download. Run this cell to download the model to your computer. Now, back in our Anvil app, let's add the data files service. Select the plus icon from the sidebar and add data files. Here, we can upload our model as a file and it will be accessible in our app server code. With our model uploaded, we need to configure the server environment to include all the packages we need to run it. We'll start by selecting the settings icon from the sidebar menu and opening Python versions. Then in the Python version dropdown, select Python 3.10. Under base packages, select edit requirements.txt directly. Finally, paste the following list of requirements into the text box. The list is in the video description for you to copy. With our server environment configured, it's time to start using our model. To start, let's add a server module to our app by clicking the Add Server module in the app browser. At the top of our server module, let's import the joblib library we need to load our model and import load underscore iris from sklearn's built-in iris dataset. The same as we did in our collab notebook, let's define the predict iris function that takes the flower measurements. First, inside the predict iris function, we'll reconstruct our model using joblib.load. We will get the path to the model file on disk by using data underscore files brackets knn.skmodel. Then we can return our classification using the same code we used in our collab notebook. And that's it. If we go to our app's URL and enter some iris measurements, our app will use our machine learning model that's deployed online with Anvil. Anvil is free to use. Head on over to anvil.works today to get started. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe for more Anvil content. Thanks for watching.